Hi, fourth grade scientist, Ms. Croft here today, and I wanted to read a story to you as we begin another um, week of science learning. So this story, hopefully, along with the phenomenon that you just studied, will give you some clues about what we are about to learn about in science. So look at the front cover of my book here. It is called Who Eats What? Food Chains and Food Webs. It is by Patricia Lauber, and it's illustrated by Polly Keller. And if I look at this picture, and um, I love looking at front covers to see what the book's going to be about, I see this really big fish, maybe even a shark. It looks like he's trying to eat this blue fish. He's a little smaller than this one. And it looks like this blue one is trying to eat this orange one, who's a little smaller. And it looks like maybe this fish is trying to eat that plant. Interesting. All right, let's see what we can find out. Who eats what? And here I have another picture that's kind of a clue. I have a fox and a rabbit and some lettuce. Oh, and look, now we have some people eating some watermelons. And maybe it's a nice summer day. A caterpillar is eating a leaf on an apple tree. Later, the caterpillar is spotted by a wren. A wren is a type of bird. It becomes part of the wren's dinner. Still later, the wren is eaten by a hawk. The hawk is the bigger bird here. Leaf, caterpillar, wren, and hawk are all linked. Links mean, linked excuse me, means they are connected. Together they form a food chain. Each one of them is a link in the chain. So you can see the chain kind of goes across both pages from the leaf through the caterpillar to the wren to the hawk. The hawk is the top of the food chain because no other animal attacks or eats hawks. The animal at the top of the food chain is always the last eater, the one nobody else eats. And we're going to learn a special name for the creatures that are at the top of the food chain. Suppose you eat an apple off the tree. That makes you a part of a short food chain, the apple and you. You are at the top of the food chain. Or suppose you drink a glass of milk. Now you are at the top of a slightly longer food chain. The milk came from a cow and the cow ate grass. So this chain is grass, cow, you. And you might keep noticing these excuse me, arrows, <coughs> excuse me, in these food chains. Every time you eat a meal, you become the top of several food chains. You can draw a picture to show them. Oh, that might be a good hint when we work later to draw models. If you had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, a glass of milk, and an apple, the picture might look like this. I see grass to cow to you. I see peanuts to you, I see grapes to you, I see wheat, maybe that's wheat making the bread to you, and the apple tree to you. Milk, peanut butter, jelly, bread, and apple. Food is the fuel our bodies need. Food keeps us alive. It gives us the energy we need to grow, move, and do many other things. The same thing is true for caterpillars, wrens, hawks, for all animals. All must find or catch the foods they need. When you draw a food chain, you are drawing a flow of energy. The arrows show its path, the path of the energy. There are many, many food chains, more than anyone can count. But in one way, they are all alike. All food chains begin with green plants. Green plants are the only living things that can make their own food. They are the only living things that do not need to eat something else. Green plants take energy from the sunlight. They use it to make food out of water and air. So this sun with these arrows down to the green plants is very important. All animals depend on green plants for food, even animals that don't eat plants. Hmm, that's interesting. I wonder how animals that don't eat plants plants still depend on plants. Maybe we'll find that out. Hawks, for example, do not eat green plants. Oh, maybe we're going to find out now. But the hawk ate the wren 
that ate the caterpillar that ate the leaf of a green plant. So the hawk is linked to the green plants through the food chain. It needs the plants as much as the caterpillar does. So the worm eats the leaf, the wren eats the worm, the hawk eats the wren. So through all of these things, the hawk is getting some of the energy from that leaf, even if it didn't actually eat that leaf. Take a walk and look around. You will see parts of many food chains. Look at the leaves and flowers of plants. Look at the bark of trees. Look at fruits, nuts, and seeds that have fallen to the ground. What animals are eating them? We see several animals in this picture. You might see a grasshopper eating a blade of grass. You may not see another animal eat the grasshopper, but you can find out which animals eat grasshoppers by going to the library. You could read up on grasshoppers and any other animal you've seen. You can draw food chains. Your drawings will show that one plant may be the start of several food chains. The leaves of an oak tree may be food for caterpillars. Beetles may bore into the tree's trunk. Acorns are food for squirrels, chipmunks, blue jays, and deer. So this one tree is feeding different species in different ways through the bark through the leaves and through the acorns. The drawings will also show that most animals are part of several food chains. Chipmunks, for example, eat many foods. They eat nuts, seeds, berries, buds. They may also eat insects, snails, and other small animals. And chipmunks themselves are eaten by weasels, bobcats, foxes, coyotes, and hawks. These animals may also eat some of the things the chipmunk eats. So the, the arrows are pointing the way in which the energy is flowing. So all of these animals that are eating this chipmunk are getting energy from that chipmunk. Try drawing some of these food chains on one page. You will have arrows branching in all directions. Now you have drawn a food web. Food webs are made up of many food chains. So here you can see all of these different things are coming into the chipmunk. So he's eating a snail, a grasshopper, a leaf, a berry, and an acorn. And then these different things are eating the chipmunk. A, maybe a beaver, a weasel, a fox, a coyote, a bobcat, even a hawk, right? So once you have several food chains, that are crisscrossing each other, you have what's called a food web. On land, most food chains are short, but scientists still have much to learn about them. They have even more to learn about food chains in the sea. Oh, I remember our phenomenon had a picture underwater. These chains are long. They are also hard to study because most of the plants and animals live underwater. So we have tiny plants, a striped anchovy, an Atlantic mackerel, a dog snapper, and a great barracuda. And I still see these arrows pointing. In the water, as on the land, food chains begin with green plants. Oh, that's interesting. Some of the plants are tiny. You'd need a microscope to see them. Some are bigger, like this kelp, sea lettuce. We have a pepper, jules, red algae. There's all sorts of different plants. And here's a fish called a grunt. The green plants are food for many tiny creatures, which become food for bigger creatures. Small fish are eaten by bigger fish, which are eaten by still bigger fish, which are eaten by even bigger fish. So you can see the tiny plant and the bigger, bigger, and bigger fish that are eating them. The biggest, such as tuna, are at the tops of food chains, unless they are caught by humans. Then one of them may turn up in your tuna fish sandwich. Both the tuna and you are part of a food chain that began with a tiny green plant. So even though you're not eating this green plant, the energy it provided, all of these fish, you're eating some of that. You're getting some of that energy. Food chains are found wherever life is found. The far south of the world, Antarctica, is icy and bitterly cold for much of the year. But in summer, its seas come alive. The water is rich with tiny green plants. They are fed on by tiny animals, and these are fed on by small animals such as krill, which look like shrimp. All of these animals and plants are food for bigger animals, such as fish and squid. Many other animals come to feast in these waters. There are seals, 
whales and dolphins. There are many seabirds, among them penguins. All of the animals are linked to the tiny green plants. So these tiny green plants are showing up in every food chain, no matter where in the world they are. They are so, so, so important. The drawing here shows a web of food chains at the far south of the world. I'll slide it over to see the picture in just a second. The arrows show who eats what. Follow the arrows and find the animals that feed on krill. One of them is the blue whale, the biggest animal on earth. Find the animals that eat animals that eat krill. Sometimes people talk about catching krill for human food, but what would happen to the food web if fishermen took huge catches of krill each year? To find out, look at the drawing. Again, I'm gonna slide over for just a second and here is the krill and you can see all of these arrows coming out from the krill that show all the different species that get energy from that tiny little shrimp like creature right so all of these other things are dependent on this little thing so if fishermen caught all of these krill and took them out of the water what would happen to all of these other species, all of these other um, food chains that are linked together. Humans often make changes in food chains and webs. Then they find out one change causes other changes. That was what happened when hunters killed nearly all of the Pacific sea otters. The otters lived off the west coast of North America. They lived in giant beds of seaweed called kelp. Every year, thousands of otters were killed for their fur. By the early 1900s, almost none were left. But as the otters disappeared, so did beds of kelp, and so did eagles, harbor seals, and fish. What had happened? The answer lay in the kelp. Kelp is the green plant at the start of many food chains. It is eaten by tiny animals that are eaten by bigger animals that are eaten by fish. The fish are food for eagles and seals as well as people, so many things depend on this kelp. Kelp is also eaten by spiny animals called sea urchins. In eating, they may cut off stems at the sea floor. The kelp then floats away. Sea urchins are one of the foods otters like best, <clears throat> but when hunters killed the otters, there was no one to eat the urchins. The urchins destroyed the kelp beds. Once the hunting stopped, the otters made a comeback. They ate sea urchins and the kelp began to do well. When the kelp did well, the fish came back, and so did the eagles, seals, and fishermen. One little tiny thing is so important to so many other things when we're thinking about food chains and food webs. All over the world, green plants and animals are linked in food chains that branch into food webs. A change in one link is felt up and down that food chain. It is felt through the whole web and that's one good reason to take care of the earth to take care of its plants and animals when we help them we also help ourselves we too are a part of many food webs all right boys and girls i hope you enjoyed that story and i hope you have a lot of curiosity now and maybe some clues as to what we're going to be learning about this week okay scientists i hope you have a great day. Thank you for listening to my story and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.